good morning everybody <coughs> the institute of chartered accountants of india they have released their booklet on mcqs and case scenarios for may 22 examination and november 22 examination so here as you are aware of the fact that uh, in uh, our indirect tax loss paper that is paper 8 we are having 30 marks multiple choice questions and here these 30 marks multiple choice questions that is our objectives type questions are there in which case scenario questions are also there and independent mcqs are there for your practice the institute has released this booklet and it's covering say 110 independent mcqs 110 independent mcqs are there and 40 case scenario based mcqs are there so we'll be starting with our discussion relating to the case scenario based mcqs so let us now begin with the first case scenario Now, case scenario number one. Now, here, <coughs> SR Associates is a partnership firm registered under GST in the state of Rajasthan. So, here, SR Associates, it is basically a partnership firm, and the same is registered in the state of Rajasthan. So, it is registered person. In GST, it is what? Registered person in Rajasthan. We have to note all the key points basically to understand the basic framework of the case study. Now, in the month of July, the following transactions were made by SR Associates. Now, they are giving the information relating pertaining to the month of July and they are saying that these transactions have been made by the uh, SR Associates. Now, first transaction, purchase of commodity X on 1st of July for an amount of rupees 5 lakhs at rate of 1000 per ton from the open market. So they have purchased commodity X on 1st of July. They have paid rupees 5 lakhs for the same. And uh, the price per ton is, rate per ton is 1000. Rate per ton is 1000. Rupees 1000 per ton. So, number of tons purchased of commodity X is 5 lakh divided by 1000. That they have purchased 500 tons. They have purchased 500 tons of commodity X. Now, the said commodity was deposited in a warehouse of NCDX Limited. It has been deposited in a warehouse of NCDX Limited, an agricultural commodity exchange in Rajasthan as security against transactions entered entered by SR Associates on the same day. So they may they must have entered commodity transactions basically transactions in commodity through this exchange and as a security they have kept this commodity which has been purchased. Now in order to hedge the FOSI transaction in order to hedge the FOSI transaction on 1st July SR Associates undertook a derivative sale transaction in futures for the month of August at rate of say 1100 per ton. Now they have on the same day itself they have undertook a derivative transaction. They have undertook what? Derivative transaction. Okay. Now, as you are aware that derivatives basically are securities. Derivatives are what? Securities. This derivatives uh, transaction is say, sale transaction. They have entered into a future contract for sale of the commodity at uh, rupees derivative transaction at rupees 1100 per ton. So, this is one information that has been provided. Now, SR Associates took a subscription from 
for an AI, that is artificial intelligence based platform from an unrelated party, ABC INC, a company based in US to get real time updates on the pricing of commodity X in the international market. Now they have availed what? The subscription. They have availed online subscription of platform. This is artificial intelligence based platform. And this is giving you the subscription relating to what real time updates of the pricing of commodity X in the international market. SR Associates have taken this subscription. And that has been, sub subscription has been taken from ABC INC. ABC INC. This is US based company. This is US based company. ABC INC is a US based company. And uh, here, Commodity X is there. For Commodity X, they have taken this subscription. So basically, it is covered under the import of service. We are getting online information, database access and retrieval services. This is coming under the ambit of import of service. Now, ABC INC has charged 50,000 rupees for such subscription. So same is taxable under what? Reverse charge mechanism as this service is supplied to a registered person. Invoice issued to SR Associates on 1st of July, but payment was made on 20th of August. So here RCM it is, time of supply is basically the date of payment. Here time of supply is date of payment. And in case payment is not made within 60 days from date of invoice. If payment is not made within 60 days from date of invoice, then the time of supply will be what? Sixty first day from the date of invoice. Now here, NCDX charges rent from SR Associates at rate of 10,000 per month and service charges at 20,000 per month. These charges have been charged for the various services and rent also because commodity has been kept there. And on the date of the expiry of future contract, that is over the month of August, 31st August, for commodity X, the rate of commodity X was 900 per ton. So here, SR Associates squared off the contract for the month of August at same rate. Now here, they have squared off the same. So basically, it is what a future contract for sale of commodity. Same has been squared off. without delivery and it is what a derivative transaction it is derivative transaction and it is basically transaction in securities transaction in securities and same is not covered under the ambit of supply it will not be covered under the ambit of supply because transaction in securities neither supply of goods no supply of services. So it's neither a transaction, it's basically transaction securities. And here NCDX has charged brokerage on the transaction for both purchase and sale of derivative contracts separately at rate of 5,000 per contract from SR Associates. So 5,000 rupees in the month of July has been charged and <clears throat> 5,000 per month in August has been charged when the transaction has been squared off. And on purchase of commodity X, additional levy in form of Monday tax was applicable. So they have given Monday tax at rate of 10 per ton. Purchasing, purchase 500 tons, as we have seen, they have 
paid monthly tax of rupees 10 per ton and uh, same will form the part of value of taxable supply same will form part of what value of taxable supply this will form the part of value of taxable supply now they say that all the amounts are given exclusive of GST unless otherwise provided whatever transactions are taken place it is uh, exclusive of <coughs> GST unless otherwise provided and the opening balance of ITC for the relevant tax period is nil SR associates opening balance of the input tax credit is nil subject to the information given assume all other conditions necessary for availing the ITC have been fulfilled okay then assume there is no other outward supply or inward supply transaction apart from the FOC transaction in the month of July and August so they have said that necessary conditions for availing the input tax rate has been uh, fulfilled and there are no other outward and inward supply transactions now GST is applicable in FOC case scenario at the rates unless otherwise specified so interest rate supply the same is chargeable to tax at rate of 9% CGST and 9% IGST and interest inter, interest rate supply is chargeable at rate of 18% IGST now they say that based on the facts of the case scenario given above choose the most appropriate answer to question number 1.1 to 1.5 so first of all they are asking for what is a compute the taxable value of supply of commodity X for SR associates in the month of July so we have to computation of what taxable value of supply of commodity X now here we have purchased 5000 tons 5000 tons of commodity X has been purchased at rate of 1000 per ton 5 leg is the open market value at rate of 1000 per ton so it becomes 5 lakh rupees okay then uh, <coughs> Monday tax that will also be included because all duties and taxes other than GST is included at rate of 10 per ton 500 into 10 it is 5,000 rupees so this is basically 5 lakh and 5,000 rupees 5 lakh and 5,000 rupees is the taxable value of supply of commodity X 5,500 rupees uh, 5 lakh 5,000 rupees is the taxable value of the <laughs> commodity X then they say that compute the value of outward supply made by SR associates in the month of August so here value of outward supply for the month of August so they have entered into a transaction that is uh, this future contract transaction has been entered this is forward contract transaction forward contract transaction which is settled otherwise then by way of delivery so here it is an neither supply of goods no services it is neither supply of goods nor services hence it will not be liable to GST so it is nil the value will be what nil in this case then value will be nil because no other transaction has been entered except this and this is not covered in the ambit of supply then what is the time of supply of subscriptions of AI based platform availed by SR associates its time of supply of services tax under RCM as we already discussed now what is the date of invoice here date of invoice is 1st of July 
डेट ऑफ इनवॉइस फर्स्ट जुलाई नाउ हियर सिंस पेमेंट इज मेड विद इन सिंस पेमेंट इज मेड विद इन सिक्सटी डेज फ्रॉम डेट ऑफ इनवॉइस सिक्सटी डेज फ्रॉम डेट ऑफ इनवॉइस Here payment is made within sixty days from date of invoice. What will be the time of supply? Time of supply will be date of payment. So date of payment is what twentieth of August. It is twentieth of August, na? It is twentieth of August. So it is twentieth of August. That is basically the time of supply. then compute the net gst payable in cash by sr associates for the month of august so computation of net gst payable in cash so first is oidr services availed this is taxable under rcm and when the same is taxable under rcm the same is to be paid through e cash ledger so how much it is it is 50000 rupees into 18 percent this is the net gst which will be required to be paid in cash here as the derivative transaction does not fall in ambit of supply now they are asking for the amount of the input tax credit balance available they are asking for what the amount of what the input tax credit balance available for the month of july so computation of admissible itc now one is the <coughs> for the month of july purchase of commodity x it is 5 lakh and 5000 and rate of gst is 18% 5 lakh 5000 into 18% That is ninety thousand nine hundred. Then charges NCDX charges. They have said now they are charging what NCDX is charging. brokerage transaction 5000 for purchase and sale of the commodity contract so 5000 into 18% 900 is there beside this then uh, warehouse charges and uh, rental charges service charge and rental charge service and rental charges 30000 into 18% that is 5400 so this is amount the in, of the input tax credit admissible 
that is 97,200. So these are the service charges, 10,000, 20,000 is the warehouse charges and service charges. So this is 10,000 rent charges and 20,000 service charges. This into 18%, 5,000 into 18%, and this commodity, 5 lakh plus 5,000 of tax into 18%. This is basically the amount of the input tax credit that is admissible. So this works out to be 97,200. So this is one question which we have discussed. This is dealing with the provisions which were there in supply chapter. RCM liability is covering. It is covering time of supply. And it is also covering the concept of the input tax credit. So this was the first case scenario which has been asked by the institute.